Hey guys, it's uh, Mike with uh, Mike McEwen Photography, and this is pricing for photographers, basically 101. It's like the start of uh, a whole kind of in-person thing that we're going to do. Um, Jen and I are going to rent out a space and have everyone get together, and we're going to do a full presentation and everything on this. But uh, basically what this is going to do is uh, this is going to get you ready for that as well as uh, teach you the formula and, um, you know, get you going so that you, you will know how to price yourself and, you know, do everything the right way prior. We won't go into the extreme details uh, like capital expenses and markup and well we'll touch on markup a little bit I have some notes here I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> looking at them a lot so uh, let's just get started so first let me go to my screen share here um, here we go all right. Uh, first off, I'm Mike McEwen. Uh, this is I'm with uh, Mike McEwen Photography. I've been a professional photographer now for three years. Uh, I have been doing this um, on the side from my nine to five job for about six years. Uh, I just got busy enough, and then I actually got laid off, and I decided to just to photography full-time and I was luckily able to uh, do it so um, these the information I'm gonna teach you today has come from different photographers different seminars that I've done and my own personal experiences um, so it, it's sort of a culmination of a lot of different uh, knowledge all in kind of one little thing um, I'm a cannon shooter. I grew up in Boston. I did, uh, you know, I, that's where I loved, uh, love or learned photography was in Boston. I fell in love with it, and I've been doing it ever since. And uh, it, it wasn't even, um, it was just when the digital conversion happened, so I didn't really own a film camera. I actually just got into film like uh, last year, uh, but. Uh, I started on digital and, you know, go from there. So, um, I'm just going to get started. So, uh, when developing a, a uh, photography business, pricing can be one of the most difficult components to implement and understand. This is because photographers uh, often base their entire price list off the cost of printing and con not considering all the costs that go into uh, what makes the price. Uh, to avoid, you know, being a victim of underpricing, you have to consider three variables, okay? So the cost of doing business, the quality of your work, and the perceived value of the work. All three of those work in conjunction with each other uh, to get you to your final price list. Uh, what we'll be talking about today is the cost of doing business. Um, obviously, the quality of work is something that you need to learn and work on yourself, and the uh, perceived value of the work uh, we're going to go into in the full um, the full meetup. So, uh, determining your final price structure, uh, you must include a thorough consideration of these three elements. Quality of work and the client's perception of its value are largely based on the skill of the photographer. Uh, the cost of sales, however, is a fixed cost and the most important factor to becoming a profitable studio. Uh, along with cost of sales, the expenses of running a studio include two other important things, uh, capital expenses and general expenses. Capital expenses cover things like uh, your equipment, your buildings, your furnishings, uh, vehicles, everything that is listed under the studio, uh, with the big things like that, like your cameras and such. Um, 
and those are all expensed out over time uh, on your tax records through depreciation. And then your general expenses are the overhead of your business, and that includes like all your bills, like your electricity, your phone bills, your salary, employees, uh, your salary, everything that is uh, costs you monthly. That no matter if you do anything or if you don't do anything, you still have to pay these things. That's general or expenses. Uh, so they have to be paid uh, regardless. So the first step. Well, first of all, I wanted to ask you guys what you think. Uh, what you think you should make the most average. I, I've asked this question a lot to a lot of different photographers. How much do you think uh, you should make being a photographer? And that's not just you. That's your studio. How much should your studio make uh, to be, you know? What, what's the number? Is it like 50,000? Is it 75,000? Is it 100,000? So the most common answer that I get is like 75,000. So 75,000 for a working studio, that's average. Uh, $75,000 for a working studio is like nothing, is peanuts. That is like you can't, you're, you're not paying yourself a salary. Uh, you're not you know, you're scraping by on your bills and you're working like crazy uh, for $75,000 a year for that's, that's your gross in your studio. Um, you can't operate a business and make that much money. You just can't do it um, because you won't be making any money. You'll just, it'll constantly be cycling through the studio. This all depends on, you know, your costs and things like that. But I mean, if you think about it, what you'll learn is that that number is not great. So I've developed a Excel sheet, basically. It's my own personal Excel sheet that I use for my own personal uh, pricing in my studio. Uh, I've developed it. I've, you know, modified all the uh, formulas. Everything's dynamic. Everything works with each other. I change numbers, and it shows me what I need to do in order to get there. Uh, and we'll, I'll show you that later, but I basically based everything off of that $75,000 number. So I based on what you need to do and what it will make you at the end of the year if you did $75,000. All right. So the let me go back to our pricing guide here. Here we go. All right. So that was this guy. Um, how much do you want to make? $75,000. So the first thing that I want to get into before we talk about this is I want to talk about the clients. The clients are getting more and more educated as time goes on. And this is due to the Internet and YouTube because pretty much all of you, including me, has learned something from YouTube when it comes to photography. I've learned many things from YouTube when it comes to photography. Um, but so are these people. And everyone knows a photographer. Everyone has a friend who's a photographer. Everyone who's talked to a photographer. Everyone who has a camera are quote unquote photographers. Um, so this is just sort of an example of a client um, talking to a professional photographer who runs a business and owns a studio um, and what they have to say. So I'll just read it. I didn't see any information regarding ordering four by sixes. What company do you go through to get them printed? I'm basically going to do a la carte stuff for myself and grandmas, but everything need, need, uh, seems to be pretty pricey. A girlfriend of mine is a photographer and uses um, White House Custom Color and mpix.com, and we've gotten great pictures through those means. So basically, this client is telling this photographer about these pro labs. Now, these are professional labs. I've, I use these labs. I use uh, White House. Well, I don't use mpix, but I use White House for one or two of my products. Uh, these are professional labs. These people know this. 
Um, would you considering order mine through there, or do you have a certain place that you like to print them? I understand that you have to mark up, <laughs> and you can add to the above prices, but I can't afford to get many pictures at all based on the prices that you gave me. I'd like to have digital copies, but at your cost, that seems impossible. I'm a little shocked at these prices, to be honest. In my experience recently, I, a, I paid a flat rate, which included the session and all the images on a disk, and then ordered prints in addition. And then this is like the kicker. This is my favorite part of this email. Let me know what you think. I'd love to advertise for you and show these off on Facebook, but it, that is not an option right now. So this person has gone to another photographer or has dealing with another photographer who said, I'll take all your pictures, I'll burn them all to a disc, I'll give them all to you for 200 bucks or 100 bucks. I'm just assuming that it was a very low cost um, session uh, based on this uh, and based on the prices I'll show you in, in a couple slides. Um, so this is an, a perfect example of how this industry is getting crippled by people that are undercharging for their services and the amount of work that you do. Um, for a typical, if you do $200 session and burn all the images, let's say there's, I don't know, you, you burn, you know, 15, 20, 25 images onto a disc, that is a ton of work. And if you do that all for $200, you know, you're not you're not doing anything. You see two hundred dollars is two hundred dollars, but you don't see all the hours that you spent doing that. You don't see all the money you spent on your gear. You don't see all the insurance that you need. All you see is two hundred dollars. Uh, so this is the response. It was like a epic, perfect response. Um, I'm so happy that you love the images of your family. The model session was great, and I enjoyed working with you. Please let me know how you would like to use your print credit. And print credits and, and uh, credit pricing and all that will go into in the full uh, version of this meetup. Um, regarding my pricing, the price of my artwork is not solely based on print costs. There are many costs associated with legitimately running a photography business, including education, licensing, research, software, and a great deal of time. For each client, I spend several hours of time. I consult about location and clothing. I travel the location. I set up. I do the session. I put everything back in my car and travel back to the studio. And then I open the files and carefully select the best images to proof. After ensuring proper color calibration, I open each file and do a custom edit, choosing the exact actions and modifications that will make each image shine. After the proofs meet my approval, I create a slideshow and maybe even composite and maybe even a composite of my work, showcasing which images work well together. I am available to consult on ordering questions and after receiving an order from my client, I place the order with the lab that I have chosen to work with. I check each print when it comes back to make sure that it's exceptional. If you compare my prices to other professional photographers, you will find that my pricing is low. I will be raising my pricing after the first of the year to make myself more in line with other professionals of my caliber. I do understand that not everyone can afford my prices. Remember, there is no obligation to spend anything more than your print credit, and I would love to help you choose which images to order. Just give me a call to set up an ordering session. So I was like, it, it, it's, it's a perfect response to the prints. We are not here to sell pictures. I am not. I am here to sell art. I am here to sell art for your wall. I'm here to sell memories for your family. I'm here to make beautiful images and have them in your house for the person to just love and cherish all the time. I'm not here to take pictures, burn them to a disc, and give them to them. That's not my business plan that's not my type of client it's not who I am and on top of that that's not where the money is you are not going to be a successful um, self-sufficient studio if you do that it's just bottom line you won't be about digital images I know that my clients love the digital images for sharing online however I am selling art for your walls at home I want to give you a finished print that will stop you every time you walk past it. My preference is that my clients invest all 
invest in quality art pieces. Therefore, the digital images are priced at a premium. My minimum print order of $250 stands for, firm. After all of the time and effort that I expend on each of the images, each one is its own individual piece and is priced appropriately. Again, I am so happy that you are enjoying your online proof gallery. I know it is difficult to choose from so many images of your family. I do have some terrific packages that you can apply your print credit towards. I look forward to hearing from you. This is this is what every single professional photographer does who owns a studio with their digital files. Okay, I do not sell digital files, and when I do sell digital files, I sell them at a premium, like this person does. I put a thousand percent markup on my digital files because that's just the way it is. I am not here to sell digital files. If you want digital files, great. You're going to have to pay for them. Um, so these are the super, super expensive prices that this photographer had. 15 bucks for a 5x7, 25 bucks for an 8x10, 45 bucks for an 11x14. Just as a comparison, my 8x10s uh, start at a hundred bucks and professional photographers in this area that's around where they're at if you uh, if you go up to like New York or even you know high uh, major cities uh, like Boston New York things like that they're a hundred and fifty dollars starting eight by tens you know these are you think that's expensive? If if you think a hundred dollars or a hundred bucks is expensive for an eight by ten, you're just seeing an eight by ten sheet of paper with some ink on it. That's all you're seeing. You're not seeing past that. You're not seeing everything that went into that picture, and that's what we'll talk about. So there are the two major things that we're going to be talking about during this meetup, well, during this presentation is cost of sale. And fixed costs okay cost of sales this fluctuates depending on how much you sell all right what's the cost to you of the package sold so if you sell a $500 package how much of that money are you paying out to the labs and to everyone and all the shipping and everything to get that package to the client that's cost of sale fixed costs is you know all the costs that stay the same no matter how much you sell so even uh, all your bills, uh, everything with your studio, your mortgage, your lights, your phone, your insurance, your advertising, all, all that, those are all fixed costs. Um, okay, this is uh, kind of screwy. Let me fix that, sorry guys. Someone logged in. Hold on one second. I need to mute you. Okay. Sorry, Robert. I had to uh, mute you. You were your mic was coming through. All right. So uh, fixed costs are insurance. Oh my goodness! What is going on here? Sorry, I'm having a meltdown. One more. Okay. Insurance. Uh, so that's your car, your liability insurance for your studio. So if someone like, you know, comes in and breaks something or breaks their leg, um, you know, you're covered. Uh, your professional insurance, this is option. It's usually what wedding photographers do is professional insurance. Um, basically what that means is if you go and shoot a wedding, and say they pay you, I don't know, 3500 bucks for a wedding. Uh, you go, you shoot the wedding, you come back, you edit everything, give them the pictures, and they hate the pictures. They can't stand them. And they're like, I, we can't do anything with these pictures, uh, and we're going to sue you for uh, everything to redo the whole wedding. Because if your contract is not airtight, they can do that. They can, sh they can sue you for the cost of reflying everyone out there, re uh, resetting up the whole wedding, redoing the whole wedding, the venue, everything. The cost of the entire wedding plus all the people to get back there. 
they can sue you for that. So if you don't have an airtight contract, uh, <laughs> you need to get air, air tight contact, air, airtight contract. So uh, and your phone insurance, uh, insurance on everything, uh, education, you know, all the seminars, all like the subscriptions uh, that you guys use to uh, forums and everything. If you pay any money, you know, that's education. Uh, equipment. So equipment is, uh, I put it under fixed cost, but it's actually a capital expense. Um, so if you buy a $3,500 camera, like a percentage per year gets depreciated, you get to uh, claim that on your taxes. Uh, and then that number, you roll into the fixed cost number, and that's where you come up with your uh, end pricing number. But uh, from what we'll do with our formula, we're going to not do the capital expenses because that it, it gets a little bit more difficult. Um, rent, you know, obviously your studio. Uh, now, what a lot of people don't know is if they run a photography studio, you claim that on your taxes. You can claim up to 25% of now I'm not I'm not a tax professional, okay? You want to consult a tax professional, but this is what I do, uh, and this is what my accountant does: is we claim a percentage of our mortgage uh, based on the square foot of my home office, my meeting room, and my studio. It cannot exceed 25% of my square footage of my house but I can claim up to 25% of that and then take that uh, off of my mortgage and claim that on my taxes as business income, okay? Uh, so if all the square footage equals 25%, I can just claim 25% of my taxes and that gets taken out for, you know, office business income stuff. Um, I, I happen to have a home studio I just built uh, above my garage. I just built a garage. I put a big room above it for a studio. I have a meeting uh, client meeting room downstairs in my main house, and then my office is upstairs. So I, I get to do the 25%. Um, the travel, uh, this is to and from uh, everything. You know, gas, lodging, all that stuff is all the same. And then your utilities, of course, you know, your electric, your phone, your gas, um, all that. Uh, so the cost of sale is how much the package costs you. So you don't think about everything if it's not just the paper. Um, it's not just the paper that costs you. It's the shipping. It's the packaging. It's the boxes. It's the packing material. It's you know, the paper you use for your business card, you know, the pens that you use to write. Everything that is used per package is a cost of sale. So, uh, for example, if I were to sell a package with a, you know, 24 by 36 frame of several wallets, several gift prints, some mounted materials, and a two folio or something like that, the cost to me of all that stuff is my cost of sale um, and all the labor that goes along with it. So all the labor is wrapped up in cost of sale. How, however much time that I spent on each one of those things, doing each one of those things is my cost of sale. Um, now I'll show you, here, let me see what the next one is. Yeah, capital expense. Okay, we talked about that. So. Before I show you this, this is the formula that you use, but let, let me show you my, uh, are you guys seeing the, I hope you're seeing that, all right, hold on one second, let me do this guy here. Mm. No, that doesn't look good. Okay, let me go back to... I'll just share my desktop. Okay. Uh, so this is my 
numbers sheet or Excel sheet for you Windows users. Uh, this is the, the Mac version of Excel as numbers. Uh, this is my sheet that does all my pricing based off of my first year in business. Um, so these were all numbers that I came up with from my past previous three years experience of just shooting on the side. Um, so as you can see here, my fixed prices per year, uh, these are all my first year expenses that I used uh, and if you notice here it says desired salary I don't have anything in there uh, and the reason why I don't have anything in there is because your first year your first I mean really if you start from scratch your first couple years you should not expect to take a salary you should not expect to take a salary and that's why it's so hard because you need to have uh, you need to have like someone who obviously is bringing money into the house and and you know has health insurance and all that and if you have that then great you know you can really work on a photography business but if you are starting from scratch and you don't have that I mean you will be SOL there's no way that you can just start tomorrow making tons and tons of money and bring home a salary. That's just impossible. You can't do it. Um, so what I want to do then is all that equals this. This is my total yearly costs. All right. I take my general expenses from my gross annual. So this is how much I estimated that I was going to make my first year, $75,000. And this was based off the number that I got from everyone, you know, saying that that is average, which is not, it's not average. Uh, but that's what they think. $75,000. So $22,576 instantly comes away from $75,000 just because it's your capital expense. Um, the most expensive, or I'm sorry, your fixed expense. Your fixed, uh, the most expensive fixed expense that I have here is advertising. I have a thousand bucks a month in advertising. That's what I estimated my first year in advertising would cost. Uh, advertising is the single most expensive thing that you can do as a photographer. If you advertise, it's the most expensive thing that you can do as a photographer. Um, everything else, you know, is doesn't come anywhere near uh, advertising. So, twenty-two thousand five hundred seventy-six dollars just comes right off the top of seventy-five thousand dollars. And what I have here is that is thirty percent, basically, of seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. My cost of sale was a little bit harder to come up with. So my cost of sale is if my average sale is $1,000. So for everybody that walks in the door and I do a shoot for, if I my average sale to them is 1000 bucks, what is my cost on this 1000 bucks to come up with this percentage, this cost of sale percentage? I came up with it my cost of sale on $1,000 is $349. So the most expensive things that they could get to me that I would have to pay out for $1,000 is $349.27. So that is my cost of sale for that $1,000 package. What that is, I think it was like um, my most expensive things are my framed prints. Uh, my my frame stuff is is uh, is really expensive to me, uh, so that's that's where I came up with that number. So the cost of sale percentage was then thirty four percent. Okay, so if I did my average sale of a thousand dollars and minus my general expense right off the top of thirty percent. And then I took that number and minus 34%, which was my cost of that sale, I get a net percent of 34.97%. So this is what I am banking 
34.97% of $1,000. Basically, of every $1,000 that I'm selling, if they were to buy the most expensive things to me, I would bank 35% of that. Um, now, I'll show you what happens if I add a salary. So, if I add a, you know, average mediocre salary, let's say $45,000, that is like a low-end salary for a photographer, okay? So, $45,000, that will up my general expenses. Look what happens. So, now my yearly expense is $67,000. That is 90% of the $75,000 a year. So just in my salary and all my expenses, I'm paying 90% of what I made that year to my bills. So that only leaves me with 10% basically left over. But my cost of sale is 38.29%. So I'm basically paying out. 30% out of my pocket to pay for all this stuff. So I'm losing money. My net income at the end of the year, I'd lost $21,000 at the end of the year. So I'm losing 28% because I decided to pay myself a salary. And I haven't increased this number yet, the $75,000 number. Okay. So let's just say I double that number. I keep my desired salary at $45,000 a year and I double this to 150,000. Oops. So before I was making 34% net, now I'm only making 16% after I doubled that and did a $45,000 salary. It's not terrible but it's nowhere near where I was without a salary and making $75,000 a year. So to get me back to where I was without making a salary, I need to make a quarter of a million dollars in a year. My cost of sale is still approaching, you know, it's a little bit too high because I've added the salary um, in my, Excel sheet, my calculation, I put the yellow box to tell me that I was getting close to the number that I don't want to be at. My number is 40%, so I do not want my cost of sale to be more than 40% of the package price, or else I, you know, I'm not making as much money as I can. My general expense is great. You don't want your general expense to be any more than 50%, and I'm at 27%, so that's fantastic. It's just my cost of sale is a little high. So for every thousand dollars, I'm paying out 65%. Now I'm back at 34% for a quarter of a million dollars. Now this number right here, this quarter of a million dollars, this is more in line with what a studio should make, okay? Because your total yearly expenses is not this. Look at my mortgage. I think this was my first year. I think I did like 5% or 10% of my home mortgage, okay? Imagine if you owned a studio. If you owned a studio, let's say your studio cost you, I don't know, if you're in a prime location, let's say 3000 bucks a month, so $36,000 a year. My net percentage goes down to 18%. My cost of sale is now too high uh, because my hourly rate went up. Now my hourly rate is $75.79. So for every hour that I work, I need to charge that. Now what that means is for every framed print, I have man hours per print. I have one hour attached to it. Okay, because it'll take me about an hour in total from very beginning, which is upload the picture, 
edit the picture, organize the picture, send the picture to the lab, get the picture back, organize that picture. Every time my hands are on that picture, doing something with that picture, all the total time that I take with that one picture is about an hour. And that's not just uh, the edit, the main editing that I do when I upload all my images. That is when they pick that picture as the one that they want to buy. I then spend an hour or so, you know, sometimes more, um, on that one picture. So now my hourly cost gets added to the frame cost. And that's that number. And then my markup. I have my markup on my uh, prints, 150% markup. Okay. Um, some industries can get away with 1,000%. Some industries can get away with 20%. I started out with 40%. Um, I actually haven't changed that number. That is my current markup right now. Um, when I started, it was a 50% markup. Um, so that was my markup on top of my framed print. Got me this number. So if a 16 by 24, if they bought a 16 by 24 framed picture from me, it costs the person, you know, $390. Um, so that's where these numbers are coming from. Now let me put my mortgage back to where it was here. Get rid of my salary. Boom. And now everything is back to, you know, where it was. I'm really making a lot of money with this, uh, setup the way that I have it here. Um, because my hourly rate, look at my hourly rate. $16.87. That's how much I need to make in order to pay all these bills. But that doesn't seem a lot, does it? You can you can work a 9 to 5 job and make more than that. You then have to worry about the profit and and oh wait, hold on one second. Let me put that back at 75,000. There we go. Yeah, sixteen bucks. Still seventeen bucks. I mean, it's it's really bad. It's not it's not good. So, you you just have to think about the amount of time that you spend in editing and even touching the picture. So this is your formula. Your sale, which is how much you sold to the client, that includes session fees. That includes package. Includes every single dime that they paid you, okay, minus your general expense, which is this right here, which is this percent, thirty percent. Uh, oh wait, I actually have an example of it. I I did an example. Let me go. Let me just go to the example part. Yeah. Okay, so this is your formula. Sale minus general expense equals your gross that you made off that one package. And then you take your gross and you minus your cost of sale percentage, and that's what you netted off of that. Now net, remember, is profit, is what you bank. So this number, it, you just banked it. So for example, to come up with your percentages, you take your total cost of sale for the whole year, and divide it by your total gross for the whole year. Okay, so in this seventy-five thousand dollar example, the total gross is forty percent. And then if I had a forty-two thousand five hundred dollar general expense, and I made seventy-five thousand dollars that year, that's fifty-seven percent ish of my gross income. So this is how much money. 97%. 97% is what is going to pay bills. And I get to keep 3%. It doesn't seem like a lot, does it? And that is exactly what photographers that don't follow this formula and don't do the math do. 
the next biggest mistake that a photographer can make is comparing their prices to other photographers without doing the math. Now, when you do the math and you say, okay, are these prices in line with other photographers, that's okay because you want to position yourself, uh, you know, in, in your market, what your market can handle. Uh, Annapolis has some pretty expensive photographers, so I've, my, my position is decent in my market. But if you're in a low-income market, if your market doesn't uh, have a lot of photographers and the photographers that do have are relatively inexpensive, you know, you either A, need to shoot a lot and sell low, or move your studio to a place where you can charge more and do less. That sounds bad, but that's really what you want to do, is you want to choose to shoot less and charge more. That's called low volume, high sales. And that is my studio. That's what I'm doing with my studio, low volume and high sales. Um, so that's basically the abridged version of this pricing game. Uh, let me just check my notes to make sure I went over everything. Let me see here. Yeah, okay. So the three most the three things to get your uh to get your pricing, there's a good, I mean there's a terrible, there's a not so terrible and then there's the right way to do it. The right way is your fixed cost is doing all the math, coming up with the number and then uh having your percentages here. So these are your percentages that you want to stick with. Add up all your fixed costs, add up all your cost of sale, make it into a percentage, minus it all, and that's how much you make. Competitor comparison, there's a good and a bad. You know, you want to compare yourself to the competitors, but you only want to do that to position yourself in line with them and make sure that you can make money off of what their price or what the market can handle. Okay, and then the guesstimate, and that's the terrible. One is you can't just say, oh, well, you know, I guess it'll cost me whatever. Just do the math. Um, during the full presentation, we will do the math. We will have uh, workbooks and we'll have a whole presentation. We'll make you guys write down all your expenses and everything. And this will help you a lot. Um, so the basic formula fixed prices, cost of sale price equals your net, okay? Your markup is probably your most difficult thing that you are going to figure out. What should I mark everything up? And you'll have more than one markup percentage. I've got markup percentages for all of the, the, everything. I mean, my markup on my digital is 1,000%. My markup on my canvas is 250, well, 150 my markup on my frame is 150 and my markup on my gift prints is 200. Markup is, is, is something that you'll have to learn over time. Uh, again, I started at 50%, so my prices were, you know, uh, uh, less than what they are now, uh, but that'll go up as your quality goes up, as your perceived value goes up. Your perceived value is very important as well. If you bring someone home and you're shooting with a bed sheet and there's, you know, uh, it's a mess and, you know, everything, and you look around and they perceive you as, you know, not a very valuable photographer. It's all about the little details that go into perceived value for clients. Clients walking into a place that's all done up, that, you know, smells like cookies, that has, there's water waiting for them, it's clean, you know, it's a professional meeting room, everything like that, they're going to expect to pay some money. If you didn't know anything about Apple and you went into the Apple store and you saw the Apple store, you would just automatically know that they're expensive and that's because of their perceived value. Just by looking at them, you can tell they're expensive or that you're going to pay some money for their product and that is a, a pretty big factor in 
also how you can price yourself. And we'll go over that in the full presentation. But as of right now, uh, this is, that's pretty much it. So, uh, let me stop the screen share here. All right, and that's about it. So this really quick, uh, let me finish looking over my notes here, make sure that I got everything that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, markup. So that was a quick kind of rundown on pricing, but it will make you think about how you want to price yourself. Uh, it'll make you do the math and do it tonight. Uh, I guarantee you that the number is a lot higher than what what you think it is. Uh, if you think $100 for an 8x10 is ridiculous, here, let me go back to my number sheet. Uh, all right, so my gift print, let's say my gift print at, this is my formula to come up with my gift print, all right? My cost of the gift print is $8, let's just say for the print, and a gift print is an 8x10 or less, so an 8x10, two 5x7s, or eight wallets, okay? Uh, that cost me in total, including shipping and packaging and you know, boxes and all that stuff, eight bucks, okay, for that one gift print for material, not time. Uh, added to that is my time. So my hourly cost of $16.87. That's how much I make an hour. Now, again, remember that is not without, that is without a salary. This is year one without a salary. My hourly cost is sixteen dollars and eighty-seven cents. Okay, with my markup on my prints, I come up with my price of forty dollars and eighty-seven cents. Okay, with no salary. Now remember, if I added a salary, let's just say fifty thousand for sake of argument, it's medium salary. Now my cost goes up to seventy-eight dollars and 24 cents for that one 8 by 10 and that is because my hourly cost went from $16 now to $54 an hour okay when I shoot a wedding I charge 200 bucks an hour but that includes digital files okay um, so this is just the number that you need to make in order to pay all your bills an hour oh, I need to talk about this too so your working days hours a day days a week, and then sessions per week based off of this, your total hours and your average sale. So my sessions a week is 1.68. I need to do 1.68 sessions a week in order to meet all these goals. Let me take that uh, salary out of there. So I need to do 1.68 sessions a week in order to meet the $75,000 gross annual goal at my average sale of a thousand dollars if I increase my average sale to fifteen hundred dollars my sessions per week goes down so I don't need to do that many sessions a week if my average sale is fifteen hundred bucks to get to seventy five thousand dollars a year but if we were back up in the number where we should be quarter of a million Now my sessions per week go to 3.74, so I need to do three and three-quarter sessions a week. Average sale of 1500 bucks in order to meet that goal of a quarter of a million dollars. Now, doing 3.74 sessions a week, that does not seem hard, does it? That's working six hours a day, five days a week. You need to do 3.74 hours, or 3.74 sessions a week. For a busy studio, that is nothing. Your average sale, though, needs to be 1500 bucks. Now, for a working studio, that is also nothing. $1,500 is in line with what they, what they do. That's how they do it. This is exactly why Sears and Walmart went out of business, because their average sale was like 
friggin' nothing. I got something in the mail from picture people saying that they would uh they would do my they would do my uh oh I didn't even have the screen share on, sorry guys. Um they would do a portrait session for like seventeen bucks or something like that. I'm like, okay. $17 for a portrait session, I mean, obviously they're going to try to sell you more packages because that's what they need to do, but there's no way that their average sale is going to make, going to going to meet $1,500 a sale, and you know that the gross annual income has got to be way more, and their cost has got to be way more. Their fixed costs have got to be way more. That's exactly why Walmart and Sears went out of business is because they were not offering what they needed to or they weren't making what they needed to because they were offering some crazy stupid like low price um, so you can be a shoot and a burn studio all you want uh, the only, you're just hurting yourself you're hurting yourself you're hurting the industry there are many photographers out there that do that I've you know, I know a bunch of them. I know a bunch of photographers that do that. Uh, they just shoot, they burn them all to a disc, and, and that's that. You have to think to yourself what your purpose is of being a photographer. Do you want to just take pictures of people, put them on a disc, and give it to them, and that's it? Or do you want to make art for this person? Do you want to bring happiness to this person and, and, and make money doing it? You know what I mean? It's It's not about the money but money is the result of your passion uh, and my passion makes a good amount of money okay I don't I'm not a millionaire <laughs> nowhere near a millionaire but I mean I've, I've positioned myself to where I'm comfortable and that is because I love what I do I love bringing art to people's homes I don't just burn a disc and give it to them you have to think about that. You really, really do. So tonight, do the math. Do your fixed prices. Get all your fixed prices, how much it's going to cost per year to run your business. And then try to figure out what your average sale is, what your average sale to any client would be, whether it's 500 bucks, whether it's 100 bucks, whether it's 400 bucks, whatever. And then figure out what the cost of sale of that package is to you. Uh, so of the $500, if it costs you $200, you know, figure out that number. And then you'll start to understand, you'll be able to come up with an hourly rate off of the fixed prices. You'll come up with your cost of sale off of all the other prices. And you'll figure out how much you'll net off of each package that you sell. Even if you sell a disc. Even if you sell a disc, there are there's a lot of time that goes into editing all those pictures. If you do thirty something pictures, there was a photographer. <laughs> I I get emails every now and then from people that are like, "Look at this photographer; it's it's crazy." There was a photographer on Craigslist advertising that they would do a full portrait session for one hundred and fifty dollars, give them thirty edited images on a disc. And that was it for $150. It takes me with my editing, it I mean, hours and hours to do that many, to do 30 pictures edited for $150. Your hourly rate comes out to be like a dollar, probably like less than what a waitress or, or waiter makes before tips. I, I, you really have to put it in perspective. Um, and then when you do that, you get emails from clients from that we saw earlier. That one client that was like, oh, there was this other photographer that would just do it and burn it all to a disc, and, and that's that. So you, you're devaluing the industry. The photography industry is totally devalued when, when, when that happens. So think about it. Do the math, do the math, do the math, and that's it. So uh, thank you very much for attending this and what we will do is uh, we will schedule a meetup once we have a space uh, we'll schedule a meetup once we have a space and you know it won't get rescheduled a gazillion times so alright guys thanks I really appreciate it I'll talk to you later